Hi there, welcome to this demonstration on Amazon Upflow and flow chaining patterns. My name is Kamen Sharon Jeff and I'm a Senior Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. And today I'm going to show you how to build this pattern. Amazon Upflow is a fully managed integration service that helps you securely transfer data between SaaS applications such as Salesforce, SAP, Google Analytics, Facebook Ads, ServiceNow and many, many more and AWS services such as Amazon Simple Storage Service, S3 for short, and Amazon Redshift. You can do this with just a few clicks on the AWS console and without writing any code. Now, before we begin building our solution, let me explain what the flow chaining patterns are. Amazon Upflow allows you to easily connect to SaaS applications and either read or write data. You can use the service to directly integrate to two SaaS applications. For example, you can bring user information from Zendesk and write it directly into your Salesforce instance. However, sometimes the data from the source application may not directly be applicable to your destination. You may need to either process, flatten or enrich the data before you can write it to your destination. This is where flow chaining patterns comes in handy. So let's see what are we going to build today. For today's demonstration, I will build an event-driven flow chaining pattern. Amazon Upflow will help me read my products data from my SAP instance, which I will then store on Amazon S3. Once the data is saved, I will then use the native integration between Amazon Upflow and Amazon EventBridge to automatically trigger another flow and write my extracted data into Salesforce. To trigger the second flow, I will use AWS Step Functions, a serverless orchestration service that lets us integrate with AWS services without the need of writing any code. So let's dive on the AWS console and build our solution. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create an S3 bucket and we're gonna call this bucket flow chaining demo. I'm gonna leave all the options as default uh, and then we need to navigate to uh, Amazon Upflow uh, where we need to create, uh, first of all, the connections uh, and then the flow. So first connection is SAP. Uh, we need to provide all the valid inputs here. Uh, and the second connector is a Salesforce. Okay, now that we have the connections created, uh, it's time to create our flows. So the first flow will take the data from SAP and store it into uh, Amazon Simple Storage Service. Uh, so we're going to select SAP as a source. Uh, we have already created the connection and here we're going to select our products, uh, which are coming in this object from this object. Uh, as a destination, we're going to choose Amazon S3. We're going to choose the bucket that we've just created. We don't need to put a prefix. Amazon Upflow will automatically add us uh, one with the name of the flow. Uh, I will save the data into a CSV format so we can read it. Uh, and then I'm going to use the map all fields directly feature here, uh, which will do a one-to-one -one mapping. Um, Amazon S3 is a skimless destination, so we don't have a problem there. And I'm going to aggregate all data into a single partition. Now, because the data set is quite big, I'm going to create a filter and I'm going to ask Upflow to only bring data which was created before a certain date. Uh, and that's really it. Uh, we're going to create and execute this flow, which will bring a subset of our products into Amazon S3. Okay, we can see that less than one minute it took for a flow to bring 341 uh, records into S3. And if we go to our S3 bucket, we can actually uh, query and see the data using S3 select. So I'm going to uh, just leave everything as default. I run a query and you can see that the data is already here. Now it's time to create the second flow, which will take the data from this S3 bucket and it will create uh, and it will uh, add it to our Salesforce instance. So uh, in this case, we're going to choose S3 as a source. Uh, we're going to choose the same bucket uh, and we need to give uh, the same uh, um, bucket prefix, which is the name of the first flow we created. Uh, the data is in CSV format uh, and the destination of our data is Salesforce. Um, 
we choose the connection and for the purpose of this demonstration I have created a custom uh, object in Salesforce uh, which is called SAP product uh, now we can choose which API to use uh, we'll choose book API just for convenience it is very important to select an error uh, handling bucket uh, because sometimes when you write data into the destination, uh, it could um, uh, kind of experience problems. And we want to uh, report those problems into a specific place. We can choose to either stop the flow if we encounter error, or we can also ignore uh, and continue the flow execution if, for example, we don't know if our data set is uh, kind of um, uh, in the right shape and form. Uh, we will run this uh, flow on demand. Uh, and uh, here again, we need to map the fields now uh, because Salesforce is a, a schema, uh, it has a well defined schema. We have to either select all the fields from here from source or destination, uh, or we need to, or we can upload a CSV file uh, which has only two columns it has the name of the source field and the name of the destination field, and Upflow will do uh, the mapping for us. Uh, and now we have the two flows, uh, but obviously uh, we want to uh, make it so uh, the second flow automatically starts after the first one executes. And to do so, we need to do several more things. Uh, we need to introduce uh, AWS step function, uh, which will be the mechanism we use to start the second flow uh, without writing any code. Uh, so it's a, a very uh, useful service. Uh, to integrate uh, different AWS services in a no-code fashion. So it's going to be only one step uh, and it's going to be called start flow. So start flow is an API call to uh, the upflow control plane. And this API call only requires one uh, uh, kind of uh, input, which is the flow name. Uh, we need to provide the second flow name here because that's the one we're going to start. Conveniently, um, step function is telling us that uh, for some reason it's not able to automatically uh, generate a policy here uh, to in order to start the flow. So we will need to do this manually, uh, which is not uh, that difficult. We just need to open the AAM row uh, that will be used, the execution row uh, for step function. And we can create an inline policy here and say, okay, uh, you will be allowed to uh, perform actions on up flow, start flow, uh, and we're going to be generous and give all uh, flows uh, to be uh, for step function to be able to run any flow we want. Uh, Okay, that's about it. So we have three out of the four constructs we have. We have the two flows, we have the step function that will start the second flow, and we now need to somehow combine everything together. And the way we do this is with Amazon Event Bridge, which is our serverless event bus. Uh, when Upflow started the first job to bring the data from SAP into S3, the moment this job completed successfully, it actually emitted an event in Event Bridge. And what uh, that gives us as an advantage is here, we can create a rule and we can intercept this event and we can say, okay, uh, event from AWS service Upflow. Uh, Upflow emits several different events, but the one that we are interested in is end flow report. So when the job completes, uh, and uh, we want to be a little bit more specific because this will give us all, uh, th this rule will intercept any uh, event uh, for any flow uh, that comes from our flow. So what we want to do is we want to go a level deeper and actually read the details of this event. Uh, and what the, the event producer is providing us. And uh, in this case, the event producer is Upflow and, pro and it provides as part of the event the name of the flow, the status of the job, uh, plus many other things like how many records were processed, how many failed, and so on. So uh, we are actually telling uh, EventBridge now to only look at uh, end flow report for a uh, flow with the name SAP products to S3, the first flow we created, and only if the status is successful. And once an event comes that matches this pattern, we need to uh, 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 kind of route it to a target. And in our case, our target is just the step function that we've created. Uh, this is everything we need to do. So uh, now before we start the actual end-to-end uh, -end demo, uh, we need to do a couple of things. We want to, uh, first of all, uh, go and uh, kind of empty our S3 bucket because we're going to get this data set again. Okay. 
And the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that in uh, kind of Salesforce, if we go into this SAP objects, we don't have any uh, uh, any records at the moment. So we can verify this by saying, oh, so we can see there is no records here. Uh, now back into uh, AppFlow. We can again start restart the whole process. So we're going to start the first flow, which will take the data from uh, SAP into uh, S3. And now as soon as this job completes, uh, event bridge will trigger the step function, uh, which on, on it uh, signed will trigger uh, the next flow and uh, that will write the data into our destination, essentially forming this flow chaining pattern. Okay, so the flow completed successfully and we can see now the data is uh, again processed. And now if we go back to our step function, uh, we can see that we have one successful flow, uh, one successful step function execution, which was triggered by event bridge. Uh, and that on the other, on its own have started the uh, next uh, flow execution. So if we go back to flows, uh, we can see that our second flow, which is S3 to Salesforce have already succeeded. Uh, but we can see here in run history that it run only once and have processed 341 records. Now, if we go back into our Salesforce and refresh, uh, we should be able to see our products in here. Thank you for watching this demonstration on Amazon AppFlow and flow chaining patterns. Today you learned two things. How to use Amazon AppFlow to read and write data from different SaaS applications and how to leverage a native integration between AppFlow, EventBridge, and Step Functions to automate a process using event-driven architectures.